After the Mavs upset the Spurs at home in game one of their best of seven series, the question on every Spurs fan's mind was how would Greg Popovich adjust so that the Spurs could win game two at home? Well, Popovich had the easy answer, which was nothing. They executed their game plan in game one, except in game two, they needed to do it better and for a longer period of time. To the AT&T Center we go. Spurs in a must-win situation against the Dallas Mavericks. Spurs down one to nothing in the best of seven series, and they got up to a great start in this one. Tim Duncan working on Aaron Dampier misses it, gets the rebound, count it, and the foul. Spurs led early, and Tony Parker was running the show. Tony was feeling it from the outside, and he's deadly if he doesn't have to get into the paint to score. But later in the first, he did that just as well. In impressive fashion, jumps through two defenders and puts in the reverse layup. Parker finished with 38 points, and he would have had more, but the Spurs gave him some rest. Second half, the three-point shooters were still hot after game one. Michael Finley from way downtown. Bang! Spurs go up 20. Next possession, Tony Parker gets the steal, and Tim Duncan literally slams this game shut. The Spurs win it and tie the series in blowout fashion, 105 to 84, the final. It's one thing to be a good football team in Texas. It's another to have one of the top recruits in the country. MJ McFarland will have a spotlight on him throughout his senior season as he prepares to play for the University of Texas, and he's already up to the challenge, getting bigger and faster even before El Dorado spring practice started. MJ's got a great show, uh, head on his shoulders, and he, uh, he comes out here and he works hard every day. McFarland is just one reason the Aztecs are looking forward to the upcoming season. They have experience at just about every position on offense, and most of the defensive backfield will return for 2010. There's a lot more heart and energy on the team. If you want to see heart, just go to an El Dorado practice. The players go at each other like they're in mid-season form. We just try to get the best out of each other because we don't want any excuse not to get win in D.C. next year. Off the field, we all have friends and everything. It's just on the field, we hate each other. And looking good in the spring has helped a lot of kids get recruited. With so many schools checking out McFarland this past year, others have stepped up to show their talent. I only can go to one college, so when other colleges come, it's good to have them see other players because other players put, it to, put in much as work as I have. The Texas Longhorns started the season as a top five team and a popular pick to reach the final four. But the Horns hit bottom with a road loss to Oklahoma last week. Now Texas has seemed to find itself in conference play. The number 11 Longhorns at Baylor today. The Bears, one of the top teams in the Big 12, and they showed why in the second half of this one. Check this out. Whether Tweedy Carter meant to bang that off the glass for Quincy Acey is questionable, but the end result sure looked good. Baylor kept hanging around in the second half, but later Texas finally asserts itself. Off the miss, the speedy freshman Dogus Balbe gets ahead of the pack for the layup. Finally, it's the senior, A.J. Abrams, that hits the dagger. Texas wins by the final of 78 to 72. In NBA action, the Utah Jazz hosted the San Antonio Spurs. San Antonio looking to hang on to their division lead. This one was tight throughout. Matt Bonner knocks down the buzzer beating three, and that was scagalicious. San Antonio has a one point lead at the half. Third quarter, Tony Parker to Tim Duncan slams it home. He finished with 24, and that was tied for a game high with. Tony Parker, who knocks down the three. Spurs win this one, 106 to 100. At this time last year, David Wiggum was at the top of his game. After a full season with the Diablos, he joined the Aces among the league and was being considered for a minor league deal with an affiliated club. And then his world collapsed. Wiggum took a line drive to his head that ended his season and nearly his life. But he was still determined to play baseball. Well, I'm going to tell my kids Monday that that right there pretty much was the situation that made or break my life. He spent the fall getting back into shape and then pitched in Australia in the winter, but he knew his big day would be when he came back to El Paso to throw on the mound at Cohen Stadium. For me to be able to uh, come through, not just as a baseball player, but as a person, I need to step back on that mound again where it all happened and where my life was changed forever. Uh, it's definitely uh, strange. In a twist of irony, in his first start back this season, in the very first inning, two hits went right at the mound, but Wiggum wasn't phased. I'm not afraid, and uh, whether, whether that's a testimony to the, uh, the religious you know, um, strength I've gained from this all, or whether it's just a, a thing of uh, mental will, um, but uh, I'm not afraid. 
It took David Wiggum more than a year with the Diablos to gain interest from the majors, and it may take longer to get back to the top of his game. But the fact that he returned and he's trying already makes him a winner. I was at the brink, you know, of, of everything I ever worked for. And, you know, just in one, you know, screeching second, it's all taken away. Um, everything that I had worked for is gone. I'm going to continue to get better. I'm going to continue working. And uh, I, I think that in the end, everything will, will play itself out the way it should.